Yeah, we're recording. So this is uh, basically how to use your Mac more efficiently, um, or maybe you were a PC user in the past and you've come over to um, the Mac in the past couple of years, but you're still trying to figure out how to do things on your Mac that you might have done with a PC. Um, the first thing that I've got in this document here is going over keyboard shortcuts. And keyboard shortcuts are really useful um, just to make your, your work faster, um, to be able to do things that um, um, instead of having to go up to file, edit, copy and paste, that sort of thing, it makes it really fast and easy for you to be able to do those types of things with a keyboard shortcut. So, if I can get a show of hands, how many of you were, were PC users or, or used a PC in the past? I'm using one or two. One now. <laughs> You're using one now? Okay. So, um, a few of you. So, if I say right click on a PC, some of you know what I'm talking about. Well, right click on a PC is, uh, is like holding down the control key on your Mac. So, if you hold down the control key and you click on um, your trackpad button, you will get essentially what is like a right click um, on a PC. So if I control <coughs> click, I can do things like insert rows in this table. I can delete rows. I can do things that a right click would give me on a PC. So like if I wanted to, um, if I was on my desktop, I'll show you this um, in a few minutes. Right click on my desktop. I can do a new folder, or actually on my Mac right now. If I hold down Control and click, I can create a new folder. I can get information on a file. I can open it. I can copy it. So all I have to do is hold down the Control key and click on something, and I can get a drop-down menu with different options. Another example is if you're in a word processing document, for example, and you, you control click, it'll come up with your spell check and all that stuff right there. Yep. So it's different based on what your application is. But I do that control click all the time. So yeah, I absolutely. I, I use I use control click very, very often. Um, again, guys, if, if you have if you have questions at any point, just remember, um, open up your doc and you can um, chat over here in the side window too. Don't feel like you have to wait and raise your hand or anything. If you have a question, just Type it right down into your chat, and we'll be able to answer it. John will be able to answer it immediately. Um, John just mentioned spell check. That was one thing I was going to go over um, a little later on. But just to kind of show you what control click can also do. Um, if I say misspell the word dog, when you misspell a word, you have a red line underneath it, correct? You don't have to wait to spell check your document. If you know that a word is misspelled, and you control click on it, you can immediately get your spell check right there. Control, click on a misspelled word, choose the word you want. Whoops. Sorry, I already fixed it. Ah. I'll stop. Again, the, the beauty of Google, Google Docs is uh, immediate sharing and collaboration. Now I'm going to have to get my uh, chat back here um, while I'm waiting for my chat to reload. So I've got, uh, I've got a list here of um, keyboard shortcuts. This symbol here is the command <coughs> key, and you should be able to see the, the command key right on your keyboard. Uh, command key is good for things like copying, pasting, printing. So like if you hold down command C, that copies something. Command V, that pastes. V? Yep, V will we'll paste. And if you, you know, it, it takes a while to remember what all those keyboard shortcuts are, what letter does what. So if you have a hard time remembering, you can always go into any program that will allow a keyboard shortcut, and you can see the keyboard shortcuts right next to their actions. So like undo, Command Z. Cut, Command X, Copy, Command C, Paste, Command V, Select All, Command A. Keyboard shortcuts oftentimes will be listed right next to 
their actions. So if you look in the drop down menu, you can often find a keyboard shortcut. Bookmark all tabs, hold the up arrow, command D. What is that mean, bookmark all the tabs that I have open right now, we're going to talk about tab browsing in a little bit too. But see how I have multiple tabs open right now? If I wanted to bookmark all the tabs that I had open right now, let's say I had great lists of educational resources, like maybe um, Tech for Teachers, um, Moodle, um, Google Docs. I'm going to refresh my page. Uh, it's it's uh, the up arrow, command D, but again, all you have to do is drop down your menu and you'll be able to see what, how to do that, bookmark all tabs. Is the up arrow shift? The up arrow is actually the up arrow. Is that that one? Oh, that's shift. Oh, okay. I'm sorry? That's a shift. Shift? Okay. So, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Um, John, John corrected me there. That's actually shift. That up arrow means shift. Shift command D. Shift. Yep. Usually, as long as you're holding out, you know, like if you have multiple keys like that, hold down shift and command and then hit D. Okay, so um, command, like I said, uh, command, you know, hit command P for print. One caveat to printing is if you're using Google Docs, don't hit command P because that's like going up to Firefox and saying file print, right? It does show you the keyboard shortcut right here. Um, I'm going to integrate a little bit of Google Docs as, as we go along because a lot of us are using it now. In Google Docs, to print, you have to go to File, Print here. And it does show the keyboard shortcut, but I think the Firefox command will override this shortcut here. So if you're using Google Docs, to print a Google Doc, you need to go under Google Docs, click File, Print. And that's actually going to open it up as um, either under Adobe or Preview. So I'll click OK, and this will open up in preview, and now I can go file, print, or hit command P. Okay, did you just do that Firefox, what's it going to print? It's going to print a blank window with maybe the address at the top. Yeah, it's going to print all that other garbage, yeah, and all that yep. stuff you don't need. It's, only, it's, gonna, it's like it's printing the Firefox window itself, but you're not going to have your document in there. <coughs> so it's one thing, important thing to, to know about using Google Docs. A lot of people make that mistake. Um, yeah, you learn quick when kids are sending you their yeah. writing and yeah. they want you to print it out. And I didn't know how to do it until you know, yep. trial and error. Then right. I learned. And, and that's, that's the big thing that we want to mention about in this session. Um, using this stuff, why are, why are John and I and Bill good at it? Because we use it every day. Why are the kids good at it? because they have a lot more time than you do to use it every day and go home and mess around on their computer. It's all about trial and error. It's all about using it and practicing. Um, you know, memorizing keyboard shortcuts, it's not gonna happen unless you practice or you, you really kind of force yourself to say, okay, what's Apple C? Copy. What's Apple P? Print. What's Apple X? Cut. Um, Another keyboard shortcut that's handy, Apple Q, quit. If I'm not using a program, it's a good idea to quit out of it. Because the more programs you have running on your laptop, the slower it's going to get. Because it's going to use more memory to run those programs. So if you're not running something, or if you're not using something, it's a good idea to quit out of it. So we talked about the uh, command shortcuts. We talked about control shortcuts. There's also the option key. The option key is 
uh, another key that's handy. And all three of those keys, you'll notice, are, are right next to your space bar in the uh, lower left-hand corner, and there's also a right side command and right side option. I've also just added these for um, to, to show you guys what uh, the icons mean. That's tab, return, delete, and escape. But where's that tab? Is that tab thingy somewhere on my computer? The tab key? I mean, I know where the tab key is, but what, what's that little icon? This icon is purely just for um, if you go up here and you're looking for keyboard shortcuts, uh -huh. they would put that this icon instead of actually typing out the word tab, they would put that icon here if you oh, actually okay. had to use that. Okay. So that's all that that's for. If you have that little squiggly thing, be the, like the Apple or Control P for printing, um, then what's this one over here that says Control? Control, okay. So Control, the Control key. Practical uses. Holding down this key and clicking is just like a right click on a PC. So that's before um, I was showing you guys like, if something is spelled wrong, or if you want to make a certain word a link, for example, if I control click on one of these words that's spelled correctly, I can quickly make it a link. If I was, say, on my desktop and I control clicked, I could make a new folder, get info. Another thing that we're going to talk about is quick and easy ways to clean up your desktop. If I click clean up, if I control click on an empty spot on my desktop, it's going to just quickly arrange my icons wow. in a manner that will be able to find some things. Maybe um, your desktop's very cluttered um, and you want to just quickly sort of organize it. A fast way to do that is control, click, and clean up. Now let's say you want to actually arrange things though so that there's some order to it. Control, click, and you can choose arrange by. Put it in alphabetical order. The date that it was created or modified the size of the file. Another way to look at this, look at that information, as, as far as like talking about cleaning things up, I might as well just mention it now. Did you guys know that you can rearrange, if I'm looking at a folder, did you guys know that you can rearrange folder items by name or date modified? Just by clicking right up here, where it says name, I can put it in alphabetical order, either in reverse, starting with U, or starting with A, just by clicking on this name tab right up here. Sorry, I missed how you got back to that one in the first place. Oh, I just, I just clicked on the Macintosh hard drive icon. This is called a finder window. You can also get there by clicking File, New Finder Window. Let's say your uh, Macintosh hard drive icon gets buried by other files just because you've saved so much stuff onto your desktop and you're having a hard time finding that Macintosh hard drive icon, all you need to do is go, is click on an, uh, some, hopefully you have some empty space in your desktop somewhere so that you see Finder up here and then click File, New Finder Window. And when you have that New Finder Window, again, click on Name, to resort things in alphabetical order, or you can click on date modified. Maybe you'd prefer to have your newer files on top. Click on date modified. That puts things in an order of newness. I don't know what. <laughs> in an order of things that are modified more recently. That's helpful with kids, by the way, in their documents folder. Yeah, if, absolutely. If they're not well organized and they got 300 files in there. Organize them by date so you can see the recent things they worked on. It's a real fast way. I actually have my documents folder right now. Yeah. Find it easier. So that's the control key, and we talked about holding down the control key and cleaning up your desktop. Um, another thing about cleaning up your desktop, when I click control and clicked on an empty area of my desktop, you saw you can make a new folder. So may, you might want to make a new folder and then label it. Um, 2011 class items or something, and drag your loose files into that folder. That's just a, a way of keeping your desktop a little less cluttered. And it is important to try and keep um, a somewhat uncluttered desktop so that you can quickly get to the items that you need. Your desktop is really your go-to workspace, and you want to be able to access files quickly. 
Well, it's hard to do if you know your your desktop is the place where you download everything to, and eventually everything's just kind of piling up on top of your Macintosh hard drive icon, or you just have so much stuff in your desktop it's really hard for you to find something specific that you want to use. Create a new folder and try and organize things by dragging them into your new folder. While I'm talking about that, I should show you guys also how to name a folder as well. For instance, um, I created these folders to hold um, spelling items. I create uh, online spelling tests each week for some of our teachers. I'll record my voice saying the word, saying the sentence, and then saying the word again. Well, these folders, Unit 16 Blue Book, here's all of the Unit 16 MP3 files. Next week, it's going to be Unit 17. Well, I don't, I'm not necessarily need to keep last week's folders because I upload these online. So I rename these each week. To rename a, a folder or a file, click once on it. If you wait a second and you click again, then you'll see that I can suddenly have editing unit 17 blue book. So to, to rename anything, if you click on it once, wait a second, click on it again, you can edit the, the file name or the folder name. Can you tell me what those zip files are? These zip files? Yes. Um, I, cre I created those to upload them to Moodle um, because Moodle will only allow me to upload one file at a time. So I turned this folder into a zip file. That folder contains 20 individual files in itself. If I turn it into a zip file, all those 20 individual files essentially are turned into one file. How do I, how do I make a zip file? To make a zip file, all you have to do, yep, on the, on the folder or file that you want to zip to make smaller or to upload somewhere. And again, uploading. Anybody tell me the difference between uploading and downloading? Uploading, you're shooting up to someplace. Okay, yes. Yeah, uploading, you're putting it from your machine on the web. Downloading, you're taking it from the web down to your machine. That's the difference between uploading and downloading. Can I zip, <coughs> can I zip, zip file to another computer? Like, could I send more enough? Sure. Lots of information and, in a zip file? Yeah, and, and when you're doing it via email or Google Docs or anything like that, it's a good idea to send it via zip because it makes the files smaller. Okay. So let's, let's say you have five pictures that you want to send somebody. You take those five pictures, make a new folder, drag them into a folder. So all five pictures are in one folder, and you zip it. To zip a folder, hold down Control, click, and it's, uh, it's called Compress. That's how you zip a, a folder or a file. The, the, the control key. The control key. Yeah, CTRL. All right. Yeah. That one? Yep. And then you pick your folder. Control. And then click. Click, you just mean that? No, nope. click actually on your trackpad. Your trackpad button. When I say click, I'm talking about the button just below your trackpad. <coughs> so if you actually hover your mouse, your cursor over um, an item. Now I have two things. What happens then? You have two things. One is a zipped file, yeah. and one is the is the uncompressed folder. Yep. Again, it's a zipped or compressed file that holds everything that was in a folder. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. Let's say. And it does it with. It does it with. Okay. Let's say I've got a hundred pennies. Right. A hundred pennies is a dollar bill. So I've got a hundred pennies. I, instead of taking individual pennies and just throwing them in my pocket and bringing them to the bank, the bank's going to say, hey, you've got to wrap those up first. I just want one thing. I don't want your 100 individual pennies. So this is taking my 100 files, say, and putting it into one of those penny wrapper things, into one of those tubes. That's what compressing does. It takes one thing and makes it into a smaller, one manageable file. So you're taking multiple things and making it smaller. You can also do it with one file as well. Compressing something just makes it, will make it smaller. Sort of wrap it up into a, one manageable package. 
All right, let's, all right, I have an example. Yep. I have some pictures from Chihuahua, mm -hmm. and I want to send them to Heidi so she can maybe put them in the yearbook. Yep. Well, in the past, doing that individually has not worked. I haven't even been able to do it. Okay. For some reason, it takes too much of something to, to yeah. add them all onto email them to her. Right. So could I make a zip file with those pictures, and then it could easily be sent to her to put yeah, you still have a size restriction on what you can send through mail for what you can attach in an email attachment. But zipping, you know, zip say three or four pictures together, or, or put three or four pictures in a folder, zip that up and attach that zip. That should make it in a, in a small enough format so that Heidi gets that zip file, she double clicks the zip, and there she has the folder with the three or four pictures in it. What's the size she, restriction about? Um, size restriction is just a, about really I mean, bandwidth and size. Okay. Um, I think it's, I want to say it's 10 meg, but maybe it's 20. Um, 10 meg is, is approximately, depending on the resolution of your pictures, about three or four pictures. So Usually a picture in, in a good resolution is around two, two and a half megabytes, approximately. So if you send someone <coughs> three or four pictures and they open them up, do they have yeah. to open them up individually or can nope. they, what if you download if you, all? If you, zip it, if you zip it in a folder, uh -huh. if you put them in a folder first and then zip the folder, when they click on that zip file, they're going to get your folder. And they just open up the folder and there's the four pictures that you put in the folder. So you could, you could do like there's a slideshow of the four pictures. You could hit next, well, next, next and look at them or do you have to go? No, it's, it's going to be the contents of your folder. It's going to look yep. exactly, exactly like what you've seen. Yep. Okay. So, um, here, I'll make a new folder. Um, I'll just call it test. And say these screenshots right here are my pictures. So, one other thing to mention while I'm doing this, instead of dragging in one picture at a time, all I'm doing is I'm clicking on an empty space on my desktop and I hold down the trackpad button. So I click and hold, and then I can create a box, and that box will allow me to select multiple files. Oh my. So now I've selected these five items, okay? And then I can, I can just, again, click and drag. See how it's moving, all those items? AJ, what if you don't want to move those? Let's say there's one of those files. If I want to make a copy? You can put them in that folder so you don't lose your original one. Okay. Option drag or something like that. Let's do a control. <laughs> if if so, I've made a box. I've highlighted those items. I hold down control and I click. By holding down control and clicking, I can now copy those five items. I'll copy. Open up my folder. If I control click in an empty space, I can paste the items. Zip. Um, if you're zipping a, a folder, a file, or compressing. January news file. Yep. Put it in the zip. When I clicked on the zip, I don't know. I got a nut, I got a version two and a version three. I've tried it a couple of times. What so if you take, if you take your the original right, original. well, that's what that zip file does. That zip file. Yeah. That's what it contains. This folder. Every time you double click on that zip file. Yeah. You're, you're adding more, you're, you're opening it up. And just so I should get rid of some of those? Yeah, I would, I would get rid of um, okay, yeah, at least two of them. What would be the reason I would want to open it up so that I could... Um, the reason, the main reason that you'd want to zip something is to send somebody a smaller, more manageable one, just one package of something. Then I might want to throw the zip away? Sure. Can I do that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's say you select multiple items, and okay, so I've selected these five items. Now let's say one of those items in the middle here, I don't want that one. I've got five, but um, SeanS.png, I don't want that one. If I hold down Command and click, I can still, I can deselect one file out of a range, but see how I still have this selected, and this, and this, and that? If you hold down the command key, 
you can select files all over the place in any any order that you want. See how I'm selecting all of these files all over the place, selecting and deselecting? Do you guys see that? Yes. Yes. That is a is a just a fast way to be able to grab a whole bunch of files that are not in order to be able to make a copy and, and then paste them in or to be able to drag them somewhere, even delete, whatever you need to do with those files, but just without having to have them in order. Let's look at this in a, in a non-desktop view for a second. I'm going to open up a finder window and uh, let's look at uh, documents here. So in this finder window, if I hold down command, let's say I want this file and this file, I don't want these two. Maybe I want this folder here as well. Maybe I want this note share folder. Just by holding down the command key. Hold down the command key will allow you to choose files not in a row. Now you may be asking, well, what if I want files in a row? Again, you can click and just drag. I'm just holding down the, the trackpad button right now and just scrolling over the files that I want. That will select uh, files all in a row, all in a range. If I hold down command, I can deselect some of these files. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. This also works in things like iPhoto. Yep. So if you want to this works in anything. Each other, hold your control key down. Put it where you want. <laughs> Um, how did you, on here, when you want to just open, get a finder yep. window, you just went on the top of mine, you just go to finder? Yep, if you click in any empty space in your desktop, yep. it goes directly back to finder. All right. You go file, new finder window. What's the keyboard shortcut that you have? What would the keyboard shortcut be for a new finder window? It is control M. Command, command, command yes, M. good. That's right, that's right. Yep. Just real fast. Yeah. Usually, you should be able to to click and drag. You should be able to, to yep. Yeah. But if you want to get it, a take a range. Book, yeah. Like let's say you want to move. Let's say you have 10, 10 photos in iPhoto, and you want to and and they're they're in the the line of yeah. the window. You can select the say the last five and then just drag them to the front and drop them in. So you have to trick it a little bit. Well, it's that's just the way the, the program works. Just click and drag, but you have to select the files first. Yeah. And then just drag them to where you want. KJ, if you wanted to um, delete everything in your history, okay. Um, what I've done is a very slow process at home because I click the top and then scroll down and click the bottom as far as I can see on my screen. It's okay. about 44. And then I have to scroll down and it over and over and over again. There's a, there's a very fast keyboard shortcut to do that. Select all. Command A will select everything in a folder. Oh. Command A, A for all. Yeah. Usually keyboard shortcuts try and take the first letter of the word that you're working with. So C for copy, um, P for print, A for all. Um, there are some that are just sort of weird, like Z for undo. Okay, who decided Z was undo. Um, X for cut sort of makes sense. Um, T for tab, yeah, V for paste is like V, okay, paste. Um, I have another question while we're talking about deleting, like, um, deleting things off the bookmark, at uh, the book, like the bar, bookmark bar, bookmark. Okay. Tool, no, my bookmark bar, I, I, I struggle and I want to get one off. Bookmarks. Control click yes. on it. Sorry? Click on it on your so, bar. if we're talking, yeah, I mean, Firefox, oh, yeah. bookmarks, let's say like these here. Um, these are some bookmarks that I have in here. Control, click, whoops. Well, you can't 
you're talking about your bookmark bar or your bookmark menu? My, my bookmark bar. I just sometimes. Yeah. Oh, this this right up here. Do you mean this up here, yes. Lorna? Okay. Yes. yes. That is that is control click. Control That's click, bar. and there delete. Oh, okay. what about, and the menu? Just hold down control. Oh. If we're talking about the bookmarks menu, um, that actually I think you have to go into the um, organized bookmarks. Yeah. And then it will show like on sort of uh, bookmarks menu. Da, 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 da. Again, just control click and then you can go to delete. And then you could just delete things in there? Yep. Yeah. Or you can highlight them and delete them. All right, so that's, that's the quick and dirty on, uh, on keyboard shortcuts. Again, if you can't remember all the keyboard shortcuts, Whatever program you're in, just drop down one of the file menus and it gives you the keyboard shortcuts next to the action, um, if there is one. Sometimes there, there's a, an action that I do frequently that I wish there was a keyboard shortcut for. Actually, I'm going to throw this over to John for a second. Is there a way to create your own keyboard shortcut? Uh, I think there is in system preferences, but it's, it, that's for a different session. You can do a lot of the applications. Yeah. So just remember to drop down your menu and look for the keyboard shortcut next to the action. Next. Um, Spotlight. Spotlight is located in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, right here. Spotlight is extremely useful for finding anything or quickly launching something. If you click on Spotlight, looks like a little magnifying glass, and let's say you're looking for a file or a folder. If you just start to type in the name of it, I'm just going to type in class. This is going to pull up every file that's on my computer or folder or even um, web pages that I've gone to that will show me that has something to do with class or has the word class in the name. So classic rock. That's in the, the music folder for some reason. Uh, classic photo album. It has nothing to do with what I'm looking for necessarily, but usually they're going to give you the top hits right at the top of the page. So if you're looking for a file or folder quickly, use Spotlight. Extremely handy. Also, if you say don't have Let's say Safari. You like to use the internet browser Safari, and it's not in your dock. Instead of going and opening up a new Finder window and then scrolling <coughs> down and trying to find Safari in that Fire window, Finder window, if in Spotlight you just go to Spotlight instead, type Safari, there it is. Top hit, Safari. Just click on it, and it launches the program for you. And let the kids know about that one. They can't see it on their dock. They think it doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. So I have them do Lexia, Spotlight. Um, Safari, SAF is enough. It will do that. Yeah, anything. Anything will do that. I mean, Spotlight, you could even do 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2. It actually shows you math by using the, the calculator program in here. But Spotlight will do a lot of things that people just, for some reason, don't really think about it doing. But Spotlight should be definitely your go-to place if you have a, a question, looking for a file, looking for a folder. Um, another thing that I mentioned in my Google Doc here that I shared with you guys is sometimes, I'm going to go back to my um, class example here. I do a spotlight search for class. Sometimes I actually, maybe I don't want the file itself. I want the folder that the file is located in because that holds a lot more information that I need. If you hold down control and click on, click on the, the file, oh, I'm sorry. Command key, I'm sorry. Hold down the command key. That actually opens up a new finder window 
that that file is located in. So this shows me, this goes directly to my documents folder instead of opening up the file itself. So if I use Spotlight, I do a search for a file. If I hold down the command key and click on the file, it opens up a new finder window that that file is located in the in the folder. It actually opens up the folder instead. That's very helpful if you're trying to figure out where it is. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, sometimes, yeah, because uh, you know, sometimes you, you save a file. Where is this file? I can open it up, I can get there from Spotlight, but where is it? If you open up the folder instead, I can now see that it's in my downloads folder. The name of your folder is always at the top of your, of your window. How many different folders do we, I mean, how many different, like, finder uh, windows do we have? We have desktop, we have well, downloads. Finder, finder is just a window that, yeah, I mean, you, you've got a lot of stuff. A lot of places that things could possibly be saved. Right. In. Yes. One thing that I should mention <clears throat> is that your account, whatever account you're logged into, there's a little home icon. See, I'm logged into my teacher account right now. There's a little home icon right here, and pretty much everything that I am saving is in this folder. Okay. So if I go to teacher, that shows me desktop. That desktop folder actually has everything that is on my desktop. So by dropping down desktop, I should be able to see screen recordings. I can see my Unit 16 spelling zips and the folders themselves. This desktop folder in your home, home location is everything that's on your desktop when you log in. Downloads. That's everything that I've downloaded on my account. <laughs> Movies. This is where, you know, right now I'm saving my, my screen recording that I'm doing for this session. That's going to go into my Movies folder. Documents. Pictures. That's where all of your um, iPhoto pictures are in. If you go to Pictures, there's Photo Booth, Chat Icons. I actually haven't used iPhoto on this account yet, so there's no iPhoto folder. But that's where your iPhoto folder would be. Music. Music, that's where your iTunes folder would be. In your music folder. How to get to that again, please. How to get here? Um, so where are you? Sure. Again, all that, all, that is, all that really is is a finder window. If I click on my, an empty spot on my desktop so that I make sure finder I'm on Finder. I click File, New Finder Window. That's that's all this really is. All this really is is my my account that I'm logged into right now, the home folder. And if just for a second, it might be a, a good place to, to mention this. If you back up anything at all on your computer and, and you want to make sure that you have everything, this is what you want to back up this folder right here. This folder holds all of your internet bookmarks, your music, your documents, your desktop items, everything. So if you want to make sure that you have everything on your machine <coughs> backed up, this is what you want to save. Save it to? To whatever. Um, you, could, you could save it to um, you know, a, a USB flash drive, if it was big enough. Um, you could save it to yeah, so um, online file servers. You know, if it if it was small enough, let's say you didn't have a lot of pictures or a lot of music, you could probably even upload it to Google Docs. So it's in the cloud. You know, and, and then you have access to it on any computer anywhere you went. Yep. Um, what is stuff it? Is stuff it the opposite of zip it? Yes, actually. Yes. Um, uh, stuff it is uh, basically an unzip um, utility. So um, stuff it will actually zip and unzip files as well. Because every once in a while I get something and it says stuff it, and yep. I don't know what that is. It so just it will it will zip or Can unzip files. Yeah. Yep. All right. Max Max Compress does the same thing. Okay. Yeah. And if you want another keyboard shortcut spotlight, keyboard shortcuts command space bar without having to click on it. Yep. Man space. So instead of having, that's, that's a good thing to point out. Yep. Instead of having to move your cursor all the way up to the upper right hand of your screen, hold down command, space bar. 
command space bar will open up Spotlight Search. And then you just start typing away. Cool. Command space bar. All right. I was just telling Diane, I keep much, I, I don't have nearly as many items on my dock as I used to. Because I just use Spotlight. If I want to find Safari, I do command space, type in SAF, press return, done. I don't have to click on it. That makes it real fast. Do you want to say, where are they? I just don't, I, my doc was getting so cluttered that I don't keep as many applications in there and I just yeah. find them by Spotlight. So it's, it's hard to see. I don't care where they are. Spotlight finds them. It doesn't matter. I guess I don't need to worry about it. Yeah, it's, this is hard to see, guys, but this down at the bottom of your screen, um, or for you it might be on the side of a screen, it's called your doc. The doc, these are just shortcut links to launching a program or a file. You can put anything you want in your in your doc. This is just a quick shortcut bar, essentially. I have a question about that. I know how to move them from side to side, but is there a way to shrink those? Sometimes they take up a lot of the... the sure. Sure. Um, if, you want, if you want to uh, shrink your doc... Um, whoops. You can go to um, up here, if you click on your Apple icon, and go to Doc. You can turn the hiding on and off. So, for instance, my doc is hidden. I actually have to go down to the bottom of my screen and make it pop up. It's clicking on the Apple icon. Go to doc. If you turn hiding on, that will make it so that my doc is hidden. I never see my doc unless I actually go to the bottom of the screen and make it pop up. See, so watch. If I turn hiding off, or now my doc is always there, no matter what. If I click Doc Hiding On, now it's gone away. If I turn Magnification On, and I come down to my Doc, now, anytime I scroll over something, it's magnified. If I turn Magnifying Off, if I turn Magnifying Off, the icons all stay the same size. The other thing, what you were just asking about was, um, you can position it left, bottom, or right, but you can also go to Doc Preferences, and you can make your dock larger or smaller by size. I could make it my dock large. Or I could make my dock smaller. I could turn magnification on. I could also position it. So just by going to dock preferences, that's where you change the, the dock size. Thank you. Um, the shared dock here does show um, that you can. Um, oh, good. This is a, while I'm looking at this right now, <clears throat> I want to point out, if you select a file, sometimes when you select a file and it, it opens in a program that you don't want it to. For instance, here we have um, OpenOffice for Kids is built into the image that I have, but um, teachers also have Microsoft Word. When you click on an icon or, or, or a file, the default might be OpenOffice for Kids, but you don't want that. You want it to open up in Word you can say, select a file, go to open with, and choose the program that you want it to open in. You can also, let me show you that. For instance, uh, <laughs> all right, we'll do a screenshot here. Control, click, I go to open with. See, this opens up automatically in preview, but maybe I want it opened in Photoshop. Or maybe I want it to open with um, Acorn because I want to edit the file. Acorn is a, an image editor like Photoshop. If I go to Other, I'll have a list of all of my programs, all the applications on my computer. When I find the one that I want it to always open with, I can check that box and that file will always open from that point on with that application. Any questions on that? All right, I, I want to move on ahead here. Um, we're starting to run short on time. So we went over um, selecting multiple files, selecting files in a range or out of range. This document has all this information that I'm, I'm going over now. Um, <laughs> Another thing that's handy is, um, let's say you have multiple programs open. Right now I've got Firefox open. I might have some other things running. 
This is another keyboard shortcut, Command Tab. If you hold down Command and Tab together, that's gonna show you the programs that you have running and you can quickly switch between them. So, I mean, if I wanna go to Finder, notice now at the top of my screen, Finder is selected. If I hold down Command Tab, I could quickly go to QuickTime. See how QuickTime is now showing up there. This, is, this would be, I think, more effective if I uh, opened up something else here. So I'm gonna open up uh, Safari. Okay, so I've got a Safari window open here. I wanna go back to Firefox. Boom, there's Firefox. Safari. You have to have the programs running first, but Command Tab will let you flip through the programs that you have running. It's, it's just a quick way to be able to multitask fast, to be able to get to what you need. Um, I often do this for copying and pasting information. Um, for doing research, say. Um, command tab, I use a lot. Especially, like, let's say you've got some music playing in the background and you want to change tracks quickly. Command tab, go to iTunes, change your track. Command tab back to the office window that you're working in. Browser window. Command tab, very handy. Uh, since we're talking about browsers right now, and I mentioned this briefly um, earlier, tabbed browsing. Safari and Firefox will both do tabbed browsing. Tabbed browsing is just having windows open in one window, but with multiple tabs. So this tab is my email. This tab is my Google Docs home. This tab is the Google Doc that I'm actually working in right now. Um, something that's really handy with tab browsing is check this out. Let's say I need to start a new document about a report on cats. So I'm going to create a new document called cats. Whoops. Cats. And in my report, I need a picture of a cat. Uh, keyboard shortcut here, Command T for new tab. Command T. I'm going to do a Google search for cats. And I need a picture. So here we've got some pictures of cats. Okay. Aww. <laughs> All right. So check this out. I've got this tab open with my picture. This tab here is my report on cats. And you can move tabs around just by clicking and dragging. See how I'm, I'm clicking and dragging this over here? I want to keep my tabs in order. If I click and hold and drag this picture <coughs> over to my document, that saves so much time as opposed to saving the file and then <coughs> uploading it into a document. Just click and drag stuff into Google Docs. You can do the same thing with pages and just by, by tab browsing. Tab browsing makes things makes life very easy by clicking and dragging things from one tab into another. How do you know which pictures will drag out? Any picture will. If you can open up a preview and and have it look like this, you can click and drag anything. So where did you drag it? You clicked on your picture. Yep, I clicked and I just dragged that to my Google Docs tab. Yep. Where was your picture before you dragged it? Where did you get it from? I just did a, a uh, Google search for, oh. for cats. That's just a... a um... That's going to be scary. Now, I should have mentioned here, How do you do that? One, another thing that's, that's extremely helpful in what I teach all the students, if you hold down the command key, if you hold down the command key and click on a, any link, it will open up that link in a new tab. So this is helpful so that I don't have to keep clicking back on my browser. I can keep my image search here and have, I want that picture, I want that picture, I want that picture. They all open up in new tabs. Just hold down the command key and click on any link and it will open it up in a new tab. Hey, it's, uh, you know, I learned it at some point too, and I said, why didn't I do that before? It's all, it's all practice and screwing around with stuff.
Just hold down command and click. Is that the toolbar, the same thing as the toolbar? Um, this, uh, that's, uh, that's not a toolbar. This isn't a toolbar. This is just, um, it's just a tab bar, I guess. What would that be called, John? That's just where tabs, you just see the, the tab headers. All right, uh, let me see what other quick little tidbits I can get out there. Um, command, command is a big key when it comes to keyboard shortcuts. If you hold down the command key and you click on a link, it opens up a new tab. Hold down the command key and press C. It'll copy something, something that's highlighted. Um, all right, uh, a few other things just about um, how your computer runs. Sometimes if your computer really gets to a point where it's running slowly and you're not sure why, check out what's running, what programs are running. If you hold down Command, Option, and Escape, that's going to open up your force quit application and you can see what's running and you can force quit programs that maybe you don't need. And that will help your computer speed back up a little bit because maybe something's hanging. Maybe Firefox isn't responding and I'm getting the swirly wheel, the, the rainbow wheel. Um, Maybe, uh, you know, I don't need quick time or something. All you have to do is select a program, click force quit, and now that program is no longer running. Because remember, every program, every application that your computer is running is taking up at least a little bit of memory. And the more memory that your computer is using, that means the less memory it has to actually run the things that you need it to run, that you're working on. So force quit can be very helpful at times. Two finger scrolling, I couldn't live without. Um, do you guys know about two finger scrolling? Okay, two finger scrolling. Instead of me having to move my cursor all the way over to the scroll bar on the side, I can just use two fingers on my trackpad to scroll up and down. I'm just using two fingers right now. Just use two fingers and you can scroll left to right, up and down. That'll work on any, any program, a browser, document window, whatever. You may need to enable this though. This, this might be a setting that you don't have turned on right now. And to turn the setting on, I have the, uh, the instructions in here. All you need to do is go up to Apple, System Preferences, click on System Preferences, and under your trackpad setting, you should be able to see use two fingers to scroll. If you turn that on, you can now scroll up and down with two fingers. You can, if you allow horizontal scrolling, two fingers to scroll side to side. Another thing that I'd like to point out is zooming. Let's say you're, you've got something projected in class, you want to point something specific out to kids and you really want to focus their attention. If you hold down the control key, for me it's the control key, and I use two fingers, I can zoom right into something. Hey, let's look at the options button. If I use two fingers to scroll in and out, all I'm doing is holding down the control key and using two fingers to scroll into something that my cursor is, is moved over. Zooming. Zooming can be very handy to point kids' attention in a certain place. Again, that's going to have to be something, though, that's enabled. Notice my screen right now, where I was just at. I went to System Preferences. I clicked on Trackpad. I do have to check the box, Zoom While Holding. And you can actually choose the key. My key is Control. I think that's the default. Again, I mean, if you use a projector in your classroom, it can be really useful. Really useful. Um, when I mentioned the, the quick spell check. You hold down control, you click on a misspelled word, you immediately get the suggested spellings. That's very handy. This is all in this document, this is shared, and I'm going to post this video online too, and I'll, I'll send you guys all the, uh, the link to this video. Um, I mentioned the clean up and sort files, how to do that to your desktop. Remember, if you want to clean up your desktop, just control click. Control click and then some empty space in your desktop and click clean up. And that will rearrange your files for you and then you can organize them as you need.
Um, one thing that I, uh, I guess we, I should be wrapping up. Um, just my, my own personal thing that I see a lot of on, on people's machines is after you've installed an a application on your computer, people always keep the downloaded file and the disk image for some reason on their computer. Um, once you've installed the file, feel free to, to eject the disk image, command E to eject or just drag it to the trash and delete the .dmg file that was your downloaded file to install. Would a custodian go down to uh, Will Aces, please? Uh, <coughs> uh, I, I mentioned in the document, um, keeping your passwords safe, talking about uh, password security a little bit, you might want to uh, take a look at that. And um, also about printing. I already mentioned the printing from Google Docs. Just make sure that you go to file under Google Docs, not file on Firefox or Safari. How do you change your, your, um, your password? Okay, um, let's take a quick look at that. If we're talking about passwords, you go into yeah, system so preferences. Uh, if you're talking about your, your, your login laptop, for your computer. Or Gmail or well, what, which, we just got a note from you, I think, that said change your password That's regularly. for Gmail. Yeah. Gmail. Yeah. You should change your password regularly everywhere. Good that was well. That that email was regarding um, a phishing scam that had gone out. Um, a lot of people got this email that said, "Your inbox is full. You need to send us some information about your account so that we can fix it or whatever." If you ever see anything like that that doesn't have John's name or my name or John Nichols or Linda or Bill, hit report as spam because it's not from us. It will we'll never sign an email tech admin or administrator or anything like that, it, you'll know that it, it will come from us. Yeah, that, you, you can trash it, trash it, trash it, it's fine. From, just delete stuff. If you, if, you, uh, if you select the message and click report as spam, it will be reported as spam for our domain and it will also trash as well. So, um, But as far as managing your passwords, I did want to uh, show you really quickly. If you go into system preferences, and go to accounts. Oh, I'm sorry. That's where you would change your password itself. You can click on your account and just click, click on change password. But I want to show you really quickly. Um, there's something called uh, keychain access on your computer. And there are um, secure notes. And this is a good place to actually put all, the whole list of your passwords. Maybe your explore learning password, your um, brain pop password, your Gmail password, your computer login password. This is secure. You actually have to put your password in to access this information. Um, it's much more secure than, say, writing it on a, on a virtual sticky on your computer. Or a real sticky. Or a real that sticky that's sticking it to your computer. That would be me. It's just, this is, a, this is a very secure way of storing your passwords, keeping all your passwords in one secure place. No, it's do. No, I'm sorry. It, it, system preferences will be able to change your password. I'm talking about like managing your password, though. Where are we going for the management? Do a spotlight search for keychain. It's called keychain. If you hit command spacebar, do a search for a keychain. There's keychain access. If you click on keychain access, and see under secure notes. Yeah, if you open up secure notes, there's a, here I've got a file called password. Um, you actually need to make a new, probably you'll need to make a new, uh, a new file. So click on the plus button. This would be, um, you know, you might just call it password or, you know, whatever. And under the notes section is where you'd actually write your password. So my example back here, I'm going to hit Study Island. My password is smith at gsb, or my username is smith at gsb, password gsb. Explore Learning, smith, username, password smith1234. Gmail, username smith, password smith1234. Power School, smith, password 1842. Brain Pop. You get the idea. So if somebody yeah. stole my computer, though. But they would have to know your password to access this. So, so watch this. If I go back to my keychain access, here's my passwords. If I double click on this file, I need. To, I actually need to log in to uh, to access that. Right now, it's not. It's not going to show me anything at all. Uh, 
gonna create a new one here. Test. Oh, that's why it was, it was unlocked. Yep. Okay, so here's my passwords file. Somebody steals your computer, they go, oh, we want to find your passwords. Maybe they know enough to look in Keychain Access. They double click on it, but they still wouldn't be able to access anything. They wouldn't be able to see anything because it's locked. They'd actually have to log in as, as you. So is the same login as your computer? Yes, now? exactly. So yep. Well, if the, yeah, I mean, if if somebody stole your computer and knew your password, what do you mean you could log in as anybody? Right. Well, I think it's just they have first to, initial name. Well, you guys are supposed to change that stuff. Yeah, I mean that it's we give you generic passwords. <coughs> they they need to be changed. No, I don't mean password. I mean login. Yeah. Like well, your your login is is your password. To to log into your computer, yeah. that's your computer's password. Oh, we have a different one. So we have another password. So. Um, I mean, but but if, that's if, what you do. If you're given one at the beginning, you should change that. I can log into probably half the people on Gmail that never change their password. You gotta change password. I can't yeah. emphasize that enough. Because I mean, if, if students found out um, what the generic code was, you know, if, okay, yeah. if I if I'm a teacher, first initial last name, um, and it's one two three four, then. Um, you know, suddenly you could have students emailing nasty notes as right. a teacher. And I mean, that's real important for anything, banking, <coughs> whatever. Yeah. Just, you've got to make those students as secure as possible. It's incredibly important. But you we could, you we could spend an hour talking about strong passwords alone. You know? Yes. How long is your password on your image? 20. My image, yeah, the uh, admin password is like 24 characters long. So I think mine's 14 and it doesn't have any words in it. It's a mixture of numbers, uppercase, lowercase. Nobody would ever guess it in a million years. Well, so when you guys said change password, I changed my passwords. I mean, I have my own password that I put in. Good. But you don't mean regularly change them, do you? Some security experts would say, yeah, it's probably a good idea to maybe change your password, have like maybe five or six passwords that you normally use, uh -huh. and you know, switch it up every month or two. Yeah, combine them a little differently, something like that. But you know, I mean, Never that, 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 that depends on you know how. To some degree, how paranoid are you? To some degree, how, how, how secure is the information that you're trying to protect? Say my banking ones or my ones yeah, where I trade stocks, yeah. I change those regularly. regularly. Yeah. Okay. My Why Gmail one, I haven't changed since yeah. day one. Well, well it gives you the key to the I mean, nobody will get it. I mean, I, yeah. another thing that I use is, uh, is, is Excel. <laughs> I use a, a locked Excel file. For your passwords? For your passwords. That's what I do, too. Um, require, mine requires two passwords to get into it, two different passwords uh, to get into that file. Yeah, I, I also print out. Timmy, you should print a copy of this too. If somebody, do you have a printed copy of yours? I do not have a printed copy. No. Okay. I've got a printed copy just to, this is in a bank vault. <laughs> no, it's in our safe at okay. school in a sealed envelope. So if I get killed or something, then somebody's got to be able to get into this stuff. So it might be something you should do. Otherwise, they're going to be calling me. I'm going to go, I don't know those passwords. 24. <laughs> <laughs> Start off with 42. 42. Yeah, you know how this thing is, John, on your company, right? That's right. One <laughs> so, last keyboard shortcut, because I see people doing this all the time. I'm lazy. That's what I tell kids. I don't want to touch that trackpad if I don't have to. So he showed you how to do that command click to choose those files on your desktop mm -hmm. or in folders. You want to put that stuff in your trash, it's command delete. You don't have to drag it down there one at a time and you know, that stuff. Just command delete. You just select your file. Done. And then hit command delete. You have to hit it once. Yep, yeah, yeah, right. You have to select the files that you want first. Remember, you could hold down command and choose 20 files. And then hit command delete. And it'll go directly to the trash. Oh, okay. highlight it first. Yep, select, select the file first. And then hit command, delete. KJ, one other real quick thing. That's nice. Just because this is another keyboard shortcut. And KJ showed you how to select multiple files on the desktop. Mm -hmm. Here's another one I see all the time, you probably do too. People want to change their fonts, so and they go to highlight, say, two paragraphs. Yeah. And they let go before they get to the end. And they go back and drag again. You don't have to. If you hold your shift key down. You can highlight the first word if you want. Hold your shift key down, go to the end of the paragraph that you want to highlight, hold your shift key and click, and it'll highlight everything in between. 
So if you drag and don't get it all, don't do it again. Just go to the end, hold the shift key down, right. click. Yeah, okay. Done. All right. I mean, you could even demo that if you want. But yeah. yeah. I just Essentially, what, what the, the difference between when you're talking about selecting things, command will select like multiple things all over the place. Shift will take a starting point and an ending point and select everything in between. So in iPhoto, if you know you want 10 photos in a row, click on the, click first, the first one, one. hold your shift key down, click on the last one, highlight everything in between. I've shown you that. You did, and I forgot it was an FD, and I tried every key except the shift key. Well, that's, that's uh, like I said, I didn't want to open my camera for a second. Yeah, if I have something else, I'll show you. Shift. I go to the, the last one that you want. Yep. Select the first one, hold down shift, yeah. and click okay, on the last one. You can even do that. And then you have to hold the photos, hold shift key. So you can even see it up here. If I'm trying to highlight this because I want to change the font, if I don't go all the way, don't start it again. Just move to the end, hold your shift key down, click, highlight. Done. It's just, it's, it's a, I think it's a big help. I think the command click, the shift click, and the control click. If you guys go out of here today with that in your heads, it's going to save you a ton of work. Let's say, uh, you're retired. What do you care? <laughs> <laughs> when I retire, now I'm going to play. That's true. You'll actually have time to do fun stuff. Five. That is exactly right. I think. I think that's what you have at home. I can find my phone in there. No, but I'm going to do it. Yeah, I think that's what you have at home. I look at that smart video with me. Yeah. 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 So let's say it's full of the right say at least ten bucks a year and not buy bar or something like that. You can leave notes up there, you wouldn't have to buy all those little notes. I know, I I know. I was so I was so intrigued by the smart board and I figured, you know, it's like this. So you do have to like split your screen. I might yeah, a little bit. I mean, because I'm just going to drag these. Oh, yeah. I mean, because smart boards aren't just for education. Business is. Depending on the photo size. Yeah. Imagine a smart board. I've seen them in conference rooms. Absolutely. People well, are very usually. I go through all these. I put them in a folder. And when I take them from iPhone and put them in a folder, then there's a I'll say you can have a information with Chuck's. Import to the folder. Import to the folder. And then I change them to medium size. You don't even have to do that. So do I just do it by passes? I guess the exercise to media. The dragging the pictures from the so expensive. They, they are expensive, but you know, hopefully they'll down in price eventually. But it's not a problem. See, it takes a long time to get them from iPhone. They're what about that iPhone. site where yeah. if you really Remember, want here's that that to be done? Yeah, okay. yeah. Hey, it could happen. Yeah, you could do that. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
share the application? Or yes, the process. Yeah. I tell you, you don't. Did you see that? I'm not taking it. But what I'm saying is, your pictures are stored already in the folder. It's somewhere on the computer. Just because they're showing your iPhone, it doesn't necessarily mean that. Yeah, you can drag them out of iPhone. There's stored there, even though I just plugged something in and got them on. Right, somewhere, there's somewhere here, there's a, I'm just trying to find where that folder mm -hmm. is. Sorry, Cutter, if she doesn't get any more help here, we're done. What's going on? I don't know, but it's about time to go find out, isn't it?